What the hell is going on here? your calculations are correct, you're back with GFR. Few would argue against the idea that Back to the Future is one of the best time travel movies ever made. I'd like to have an argument, please. And thanks to the movies, we know how Doc Brown did it. This is what makes time travel possible. The flux capacitor. But wait, what the heck is a flux capacitor? Flux capacitor, fluxing. It's not as ridiculous as you might think, and there is an internal logic, and even a bit of real science behind Dr. Emmett Brown's most pivotal invention. The doc first came up with the flux capacitor in 1955. I remember it vividly. I was standing on the edge of my toilet hanging a clock, the porcelain was wet, I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink, and when I came to I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head. When he woke up, he drew this. That is the first ever notion of a flux capacitor. Doc Brown would then go on to exhaust his entire family fortune in a mad pursuit towards making the flux capacitor and time travel a reality. He would achieve his dream in 1985 with the first successful test of his time machine. And it only works thanks to the flux capacitor. So what exactly is the flux capacitor besides an odd box with some flashing tubes in a letter Y configuration? While the Back to the Future movies never explicitly state how the flux capacitor works, it does give us some clues. The biggest clue is in the device's name. In the realm of physics, flux refers to the quantity of a substance, such as electricity, flowing across the surface of an object, while capacitor is an apparatus designed to store electrical charge. Doc's invention is rooted in enough science that even though no engineer has invented time travel yet, Many engineers have developed flux capacitors of their own as an homage to the film. In theory, the flux capacitor functions as a power reservoir for an immense amount of energy, specifically 1.2 1 gigawatts. Or as Doc Brown mispronounces it, 1.21 gigawatts! When a flux capacitor travels at a speed of precisely 88 miles per hour, this energy is directed through the flux capacitor's three luminescent rods causing microwaves to travel unidirectionally and converge at the center. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Then the flux capacitor, connected to the flux bands located on the exterior of the DeLorean, would unleash a staggering 1.21 gigawatts of power, enabling a transition through a wormhole at the speed of 88 miles per hour. So the short answer here is that the flux capacitor creates a wormhole and a speed of at least 88 miles per hour is necessary to move the object being sent into the wormhole through it and out the other end. However, for the DeLorean to generate that wormhole, it must first capture and disentangle two black holes, a feat requiring the intersection of quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. In the time travel theory presented by the Back to the Future movies, the space-time continuum would have to be spherical because when Marty and Doc hop into the DeLorean to time travel, they essentially leave one space in time to reappear in the exact same space, just at a different point in time. Right. Unfortunately, this one fact is probably the biggest knock against Doc Brown's method of time travel ever becoming a reality. Nothing ever stays in the same place, as we're sitting on a spinning planet continuously being propelled through space. Aside from that, one of the biggest obstacles to getting a flux capacitor to work is generating enough power to feed it. Doc Brown's DeLorean relies on a conventional engine powered by conventional gasoline to propel the car up to 88 miles per hour. But the internal combustion engine runs on ordinary gasoline. It always has. However, the flux capacitor works on an entirely separate power source. It requires something with a little more kick. Plutonium! The first generation time machine ran on illegal plutonium, which, as you'll recall, Doc Brown got from the Libyans by trading them a fake bomb. The Libyans! While Doc's time machine is electrical and not nuclear, it needs a nuclear reaction to jumpstart wormhole creation. So that's why the flux capacitor needs 1.2, 1 gigawatts. Let's take a moment to think about how much power 1.21 gigawatts actually is. A nuclear powered Nimitz class aircraft carrier used by the US Navy only uses 194 megawatts. There are 1000 megawatts in a gigawatt. So the flux capacitor uses nearly six aircraft carriers of power that's not easy to generate, and when plutonium isn't available, the only way to get it is with a bolt of lightning. 
What did you say? A bolt of lightning! And thanks to time travel, Doc Brown has the ability to know where and when a lightning bolt will strike. A lightning bolt flash lasts only 2 milliseconds. In that 2 milliseconds, more than 10 gigawatts of energy is released. Lightning bolts and radioactive isotopes aren't convenient, so eventually Doc Brown upgrades the DeLorean. I need fuel! That upgraded version no longer needs plutonium, and instead uses a futuristic device called the Mr. Fusion. We can dig into how Mr. Fusion works in another video, but in short, it has the ability to convert garbage into massive amounts of power. A lot more convenient and safe than bargaining with terrorists using pinball machine parts. So is the flux capacitor real? No. Could a flux capacitor ever actually work? No. Hello? Hey. Hello, anybody home? I think McFly thinks. But there is some real science behind it, applied in a different way. Some of that real science might indeed, someday, make time travel possible. All right, folks, come on, this is a party. Come on, let's have some fun. When that day comes, pack your hoverboard and make sure you have enough road to get up to 88. This has been GFR. Oh, <laughs>